happy sabbath everyone god bless you i hope you guys are having a great sabbath so far and today i wanted to talk about a specific subject i'm going to be talking about the sabbath man the sabbath is so broad so so much information about the sabbath but the reason why i wanted to talk about the sabbath today is because there's kind of a misunderstanding of what we can do and what we can do on the sabbath um there's a misunderstanding on what what we do in regards to church and and serving others and how we spend the sabbath there's a misunderstanding there's a general misunderstanding but i know one thing and there's one thing for certain is that the word of god can tell us how to keep the sabbath everything we need to know about keeping the sabbath is in the word of god and i'm actually very excited i've been a seventh day adventist since 2002 so learning the sabbath is something we're going to keep on learning and learning even till jesus comes because god wants us to draw close to him and as we draw close to him with our devotion and spending time with him and reading and studying the word we learn more about how he views how we should keep the sabbath and how we should keep the sabbath and how we ought to have a relationship with god so what we're going to do first is we're going to look i want to look first on how jesus kept the sabbath okay so let's go ahead and look at um matthew chapter 12 verses 1 to 12 i'm going to be talking a little bit about what's going on around the scenes in regards to the pharisees and how jesus was keeping the sabbath let's pray father in heaven not my words, Lord, but thy words, Lord. Not my will, but thy will, Father. Speak through me and not myself, my Lord. Let your glory be seen and let men be lifted up to you. Forgive me for my sins and inspire me through the power of your Holy Spirit that I speak in Jesus Christ's name, amen. Now listen, we are going to look at what's going on here. I'm going to ask a few questions like, I'd like to, I, before going anywhere in the bible i want to i want to start first sorry about that i want to start first um with jesus how did jesus keep the sabbath um what was happening during that time when jesus was here on earth what was going on in regards to him and how the pharisees saw jesus now a little history the pharisees had placed a lot of rules and regulations around the keeping of the sabbath and they made it so grievous for the person that was to keep the sabbath to actually enjoy the sabbath you couldn't walk this way you couldn't turn on the fire you couldn't do this you couldn't do that the sabbath became something that was not even for man anymore it just became something very uh grievous and very uh religious how should i say a grievous thing people dreaded the coming of the sabbath because there were so many things that they could not do. And you know the interesting thing about that is, when people don't understand how to keep the Sabbath and what the Sabbath is about, it becomes grievous, because there are rules and regulations, and they are not seeing Christ in it. They're just seeing rules. But today, well, hopefully in the next few videos, we'll, be, get, we'll dive deeper into what the Sabbath is all about. Okay. Let's go. So what was happening during the time of Jesus Christ and the Pharisees? One of the things that was happening is that they did not know how to keep the Sabbath. In fact, they thought they knew how to keep the Sabbath, like I said before, and they had multiple rules and regulations. And then Jesus came to teach them and us how to keep the law of God in his love and in his righteousness so let's go ahead one of the problems that the pharisees had with jesus is that they thought he was breaking the sabbath but in the the reality of the matter was they were actually breaking the com sabbath commandment the sabbath commandment is not meant to place a burden or a hindrance this is a clue a place a burden or a hindrance on the work of god not the work of man and we'll get to that in fact before i go any further I would like to go to that. Um, Exodus chapter, let's go to Exodus chapter 20, verses 8. I think that is it. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. I want to read it to you. 
Let's see what we got here. It says, I'll just go ahead and read it. Remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy ma ma manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle that is within thy gates, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all them that is in them, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Now, but there's something, come. there's a little conflict there. It says, labor six days to do the work. It says, six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. Emphasis on thy work. But I wanted to point something out. Jesus told the Pharisees when they accused him, they said, you are doing things on the Sabbath that ought not to be done. And we're going to go to the scripture. Jesus told them, my father worketh, therefore I work. So is Jesus breaking the commandments? You know, a lot of us already place restrictions and hindrances on the Sabbath, not to do certain things, not understanding, while not understanding the true meaning of the Sabbath. Let's go ahead, um, I guess, before I go into um, the scripture I wanted to read, I wanted to talk about something. Um, it is clear that in the Word of God, the Bible talks about two different kinds of work. There is the work that we do. That's why it says in Exodus chapter 20, verses 8, um, actually verses 9, it says, Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. We have our own work, and the work that we do is the work that we do, the secular work. We do the work to pay bills. Maybe we have businesses. We, we make money. We pay bills. We take care of our house. We take care of our cars. And we pay those bills and those things that need to be paid. And how we do that is that we have our work. It says, labor and do all thy work. Okay? That is our work. Okay? That is one work. That's one type of work. But there's a, another type of work. It is the Father's work. It is the gospel work. And the gospel work does not stop on the Sabbath. In fact, we would go as far as to say that the Sabbath, on the Sabbath, the gospel work is more, how should I say this, extended, expressed. And we'll go into that in the other videos that will go. But I wanted to share with you that there are two types of work. See, this is where our understanding of the Sabbath becomes even better. There are two types of work. One type of work is we labor to fulfill all our bills and take care of our family. But there's another type of work which God prefers us to do. is the work of taking care of His church, doing gospel work, like visiting the widows, doing Bible studies, handing out books, even uh, as a pastor, preaching or doing uh, uh, those gospel works or go gospel orders, anything that has to do with the upkeep of God's church, uh, you know, the, the Bible studies or taking care of people, things, that is the gospel work. What the church is called to do, Isaiah 58 in Acts chapter, uh, Acts chapter uh, uh, 2 uh, and so on and so forth. You know, in Acts chapter 2 when the disciples, when they, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, and the, the first church at that time, they sold what they had and made sure that the poor and the needy had everything they needed and everybody had everything equally. That is the gospel work. It does not stop on Sabbath. Because the Sabbath is a reflection of the gospel work. You know, Jesus said the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. I'm going ahead of myself, but that's fine. We're going to look at some scripture. Now, when Jesus says the Sabbath is made for man and not man for the Sabbath, yes, we are part of that group called man, but also the other group of that man is the world. On the Sabbath, we as Christians, as Seventh-day Adventists, as God's children, are supposed to serve the people in the world, care for them, take care of them, provide for them so that they will see the gospel in action and they'll want to be saved. Remember when Jesus healed the leper and the blind and the people that had needs during his ministry, after Jesus healed them, some of them said, what must I do to be saved? In fact, you know, that was 
the whole mission of the gospel is to express Christ's love and his care to lost men. The Sabbath is not made for man. The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. You get what I'm saying? So let's go into scripture, right? And I want to uh, go ahead and just look at this story before I uh, finish today's video. I want to look at the relationship between Jesus and uh, Jesus and the, the Pharisees. Okay? I'd like to read this. Very short video. Not going to be too long. All right. Matthew chapter 12, it says, And at the time Jesus went on the Sabbath through the corn and his disciples were and hungry and began to pluck the ears of the corn to eat. Now, I want to point out something. When you're harvesting corn, of course, you take your, when you're harvesting corn, you take the corn, you know, you're going through the field and you're plucking the corn and, and so on and so forth. Now, continue to read that. So Jesus was technically kind of harvesting the corn to eat with his disciples. It says, but when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. Is that true? That was in the perspective of the Pharisees. They were wrong. That was their perspective. Their perspective was, it's unlawful to pluck the, the ears of the corn on the Sabbath day because it's considered work. Okay? Now, what was Jesus doing that they accused him of? which was work, quote-unquote, he was providing food for his hungry disciples that have been working all day for the gospel. He was plucking food for them. He was allowing them to eat the corn. And the, the Pharisees decided to accuse him of making them and him work by providing food for his disciples. Now, you see the picture that's shown here? We have to be real careful. Meanwhile, we don't understand the Sabbath. We start to point fingers and say this ought not to be done on Sabbath when it should be because it's the gospel order, the gospel work. And it says here in verse 3, But, the, but he said unto them, Have ye not read that what David did when he was an hungered, and they that were with him? How he entered into the house of God and did eat the shoe bread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests? Or have ye not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? But I say unto you that in, the, in this place is one greater than the temple. But if ye had known what this meaneth, I'll have mercy and not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath day. What does that mean? God is the Lord of the Sabbath day. So anything that we do under Christ's name on the Sabbath day to provide, to uplift, to upkeep, like upkeep the church or anything of that nature, He is Lord of the Sabbath. And therefore, Jesus is working on the Sabbath the gospel order providing food for his disciple and working on the Sabbath for the gospel. The gospel work is appropriate and it's right to do on the Sabbath. And it says in verse 9, And when he was departed thence, he went into the, their synagogue, and behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they might accuse him? Now, I want to stop right there on this video right quick. You know, in my experience as a Christian, as a Sabbath keeper, from the last, from since 2002 up till now, learning about the Sabbath, learning about God's mercy on the Sabbath, learning about how we should keep the Sabbath, I've learned a lot. And I'm still learning that do, don't do this and don't do that and don't do this and don't do that. Yes, that has its place. But in these stories, Jesus is telling us what, it is, what is lawful to do on the Sabbath. Should we feed the homeless? Should we, um, should we give clothes to those that have no clothes? Should we go and visit those that have no one and are lonely? Should we care for the widows? These are things we should do on the Sabbath. 
The Sabbath was not meant for us to lay down on our bed all day or go home and relax all day and do nothing. The Sabbath is a day of action to, uh, to relieve the, 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 the oppressed, to, to find out how we can help those that are in need. You know, as much as, as I would love to say, yes, the Sabbath is a day for me to, to hang out with my family, but it's not all the day for that. I have church family. I have family outside that I have not even known yet that I have to make friends with and, and bring into the fold of God. The Sabbath is a day of ministry. And I'll get into that in the next few videos. But I'd like to continue. <clears throat> it says here in verses... Go ahead. I'm going to read verses 10 again. And behold, there was a man which had his, his hand withered, and they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they, that they might accuse him? And verse 11 says, And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep? And if he fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? So Jesus is pointing out their hypocrisy. Remember the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath? Jesus was pointing out his, their hypocrisy. And Jesus says here, okay, in verse 12, How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. We're going to get into it. You don't worry, we'll get into it. Yes. And so it says here in verse 13, Then said he unto the man, Stretch forth thy hand, and he stretched forth his hand, and he was restored whole like as others. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him. So do you think that there's a problem today with the understanding of how to keep the Sabbath? You see, that's our problem. You know, in our zeal, we can be very mistaken in thinking that we are right. But the Sabbath is something, as especially as a new Christian, the Sabbath is something that we're going to continue to learn and learn and learn because there's a growth process in, and a maturity in learning how to keep the Sabbath. Let's go ahead. I'm going to read John chapter 7, verses. John chapter 7, verses 23. It says here. And this is Jesus talking, talking to the Pharisees. It says, If a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision, that the law of Moses should be, not be broken, are ye angry at me because I have made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath day? So we're just, we're just talking about the conversation that Jesus had with the Pharisees. And one of the biggest problems was that they thought they were keeping the Sabbath day by all these regulations and rules that had placed around the Sabbath, that when Jesus came, Jesus basically dumbfounded them because... They thought they were doing the right thing, but they were not. They were not doing the right thing. And so I'd like to, before finishing this video, give you a little taste of what we're going to be discussing in the next video. The next video is going to go back into the, the priest system where we had the high priest and the regular priest that would officiate daily. Let me see if I can actually pull that up. I think it's here somewhere, but we'll pull that up for the next lesson. Actually, you know what? Let's go to Leviticus 24, 1 to 9. Leviticus 4, 1 to 9. Okay? Leviticus chapter oh, 24, actually. Leviticus chapter 24, verses 1 to 9. Okay? Okay, let's see here. Uh, okay. Okay. Actually, you know what? I'm going to read probably from 8 and 9. Now, Leviticus 24 talks, God is giving Moses the instructions on how to set up the sanctuary and the, the, the ceremonies and, and, the, and the, the programs and the basically how the sanctuary should be run and what should be done in it. And God is giving Moses instructions to give to Aaron. And this is just, uh, um, just an explanation of what the high priest and the, the priest were to do every day, including on the Sabbath. Now it says here on Leviticus 24, 8 to 9, it says, Every Sabbath 
He shall set in order before the Lord continually, being taken from the children of Israel by an everlasting covenant. And it shall be Aaron and his sons, and they shall eat in the holy place, for it is most holy unto him of the offering of the Lord made by fire, by a perpetual statute. Okay, there are other scriptures that we'll talk about. I think let's go ahead and go to Numbers. Numbers, um, Numbers 28, 9 to 10. Numbers 28, 9 to 10. It says here, And on the Sabbath day, two lambs of the first without, two lambs of the first year without spot or two tenths deal of flour for a meat offering mingled with oil and the drink offering thereof. This is the burnt offering of every Sabbath before the before, beside the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. And in the beginnings of your month, you shall offer a burnt offering unto the Lord, two young bullocks and one ram, seven lambs of the first year without spot. Now, the reason why I read those, there's more. In the next video I'll cover it. I don't want to burden anyone with this video. Basically, do those things still apply to us today? Did the priest and the high priest have to do a work on the Sabbath? Yes, they did. Every day they had morning and evening sacrifice. The high priest, uh, every seventh month of the year on the 10th day of the Jewish year, which is the Day of Atonement, he would officiate. But the, the other priests that were lower than him would have to officiate with the burnt offering they would have to offer sacrifices morning and evening, even on the Sabbath. And that was the work of the Lord. That is the Father's work. Okay? So I, would, I can imagine like a, a deacon or an elder or a pastor. On the Sabbath day, he's doing the Father's work. When they have meetings about how to upkeep the church, is the Father's work. When a deacon is picking up the chairs and putting it away, is the Father's work when a deaconess is trying to make things sure things are tidy before church, before people leave church, is the Father's work, is the upkeep of the church. So anytime elders or deacons or past, the pastor is preaching on Sabbath, is the Father's work. It's not the secular work, the regular work. It's the Father's work. Like Jesus says, my Father work and therefore I work is a scripture I can actually pull up in a second here. So what is, the, what is my point? My point here is we have to study the Word of God. I was reading that last part about the high priest. Some people were like, oh, that's the Old Testament. But in 1 Peter 2.9, it says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should shew forth the praise of Him has called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. That same old priesthood can also be related to the modern day church because the modern day church has a leader, a high priest, like a pastor or a deacon or an elder or a deaconess or deacon. And they have, they have to, during the Sabbath, make sure that the gospel work continues through taking care of the church, the food in the church, the, the cleanliness of the church, the order of the church, the safety of the church. The leadership of the church. This is the gospel work. It has to be done. It does not stop on Sabbath. I'll do more videos and we'll talk about it more. I wanted to pull up that scripture where Jesus says that he works so his father works and then we'll end this video. Um, I hope you guys are having a good time and understanding a little bit through scripture what Jesus really says about and what God really says about the Sabbath. This is going to be Luke 13. Luke 13, let's go ahead and look here. All right, let's see here. Okay, um, this is not it, but let me let me look at it. I'll, I'll be able to pull it up real quick. I didn't, I thought I had written it down, but I have not written it down. So basically, my, my whole point for this video is to explain the two different types of work. There's the gospel work, the Father's work. And then there is our work. All right, it says in John chapter 5, verse 17, But Jesus answered them. This is in regards to when the Pharisees were accusing Jesus of doing things on the Sabbath that they thought that he should not do. Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. Okay, but, you know, they didn't, they didn't care. They didn't think Jesus was the Messiah because, they didn't, because he didn't meet their criteria. But it says here in John 5, 17, 
But Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only broke, had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making him equal to God. Now, I want you to understand that that is from the perspective of the Pharisees. He did not break the Sabbath, because Jesus came to teach them how to keep the Sabbath, but they didn't understand how to keep the Sabbath. So, I'm gonna, uh, we're going to talk more about that later, but God bless you. I hope everything is well with you, that you can understand more and more about the Sabbath and about the Father's work and our secular work, the work of man and the work of the Father. Hopefully that brings things to more clarity on, on what things that we could do on the Sabbath is involving God's work, passing out flyers, doing Bible studies, you know, maybe having important meetings on Sabbath about the upkeep of the church, even the deaconess's work about in the kitchen or, um, you know, the deacon's work or the elder's work or whatever. Hopefully that brings a more understanding in regards to the father's work and the, the secular work that we do. There is more information in that. I don't want to go too long, but we'll talk about it more in the second video. Uh, we'll be talking about the Sabbath and what even the Old Testament people did after the priestly priests. Uh, uh, period, what the kings did on the Sabbath and all that stuff, what was God's work and what was um, our work. And then we can talk about the things we shouldn't do on the Sabbath and the things we ultimately should do on the Sabbath. Like Jesus said, it's lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Hope all is well with you and God bless you. Um, hope you have a great day.